Hey YouTube, it's brother Mark here. I hope you're well and good. It's Monday morning here in the UK and I uh, wanted to talk briefly uh, about uh, an article that somebody sent me actually and, and I've seen it in the news as well. It's to do with Christians assembling um, um, and especially over this, this Easter period and uh, in buildings called churches and, and this is what I mean. There's quite a lot of problems with this anyway and and it's been turned into um, a big issue certainly for some people, some groups and uh, you get Christians that, that belong to these buildings that um, are absolutely insistent uh, to go and do these things. And um, then you get the lost that, that are observing these actions. And again, it goes back to what I've been putting out here on this channel, that, that as Christians, we're not supposed to be assembling in buildings called churches. Now, you'll, you'll notice I don't say, you know, that we shouldn't be assembling at all. We should. Um, we should not forsake assembly. Um, but it's not in dedicated buildings called churches. And uh, this is, you know, this highlights the whole point about the problem with these buildings in that they bring us into conflict in a number of ways, uh, not just with scripture, but with the lost as well, because they will actually see this activity and consider, consider it as, as flaunting, you know, social distancing and the rules at this current time. And this is what we need to be mindful as Christians in that we, we should be obeying the laws of the land where they don't conflict with scripture. And when Christians assemble in, in buildings called churches, they assume that actually um, they, they have to do that um, and that they're defiant to the government for that reason. Um, and I've not done that. You know, I've made mistakes in the past, you know, where I've when I first got saved and I just didn't know any better. But a simple read of scripture shows that we shouldn't be assembling in buildings called churches. Um, now, whether you choose to do that is up to you, but that scripture doesn't, you know, talk about that. So as Christians during this particular time, um, there should be no problem. Um, short of assembling with friends and family and, and other Christians that you know, there should be no problem at all. I don't belong to a denomination because there is no such thing as denominations in the body of Christ. I don't belong to anything. Uh, I'm just simply a Christian. And for me to be at home, to assemble with my family, to correspond with the saints, to meet with the saints, the only thing I can't really do is meet with the saints. And I wasn't really doing that all the time because there's so few of us anyway that are they're actually, you know, King James Bible believing Christians and doctrinally sound. There's so few of us anyway. It's not like, um, you know, there's a, a huge challenge with respect to uh, assembling with the saints so it really shouldn't change your life too dramatically as a bible believing christian you know and the only people that are affected are the people that belong to this kind of corporate assembly in buildings called churches where you've got to have these services and you've got to have this thing and that thing you know this rotor that schedule this event that event including the easter period by the way you know, and you can regard that day if you want. The scripture says you can, of course, and but you're also able to not regard it, right? And it talks about that in Romans. So for people to get so worked up about it, um, and especially view it as an attack on their faith, uh, is to, to me it's it's kind of foolish. Whether you want to regard Easter or not, that's no problem. You know, you, you're welcome to do the same with Christmas or anything else. Regard it by all means. Regard it. Regard it to the Lord. But to be so adamant about it, you know, is is an alarming uh, step to make because we also need to have a good report to the world. And when they see Christians that are just defying um, common sense, by the way, this isn't law, but common sense and, and the request of of the government of the country you live in, it doesn't look good. And I know we shouldn't be concerned with how we look in some respects to the loss, we do need to be mindful of it because they're watching us, you know, as lawbreakers in, in some respects, right? And what we're doing as Christians. And we need to be mindful of that. This is still a good time to reach out to people because the seriousness of this situation can't be understated. And people need to be aware of the gospel, aware of their ultimate des destination because you know, death isn't the end. And it's not, you know, you can just kind of escape things and, and that's it you know there is judgment and there is a heaven and there is a hell and uh, people need to know about that and you can still do that you can still share that and, and try and encourage people to think about it you know because as I've talked about before evangelizing it's not a you know knock on the door and you get a decision right there it takes time 
and it takes time to persuade people but we do it because we know the terror of the lord and um you know that takes time and you have to work on that so i encourage you to spend your time actually sharing the gospel and reaching out to people lost family lost friends um and and try and help them in that respect but you have to be mindful of what you're doing as a christian and how uh, not just your your local circle of of friends and family and so on how they view you but how the entire lost world views you and if you do assemble at a building i strongly encourage you not to go um and actually maybe you should take the time now to review why you do that you know when you look at the scriptures and you don't see dedicated buildings called churches and again going back to the very beginning of this video not talking about assembly nothing wrong with assembly assembly is fantastic but there are no such things as dedicated buildings called churches and we wouldn't see articles or videos from news sites that that talk about christians flaunting flaunt, what is it flaunting flaunting you know this this request and i noticed in the video that i was looking at that you know they, they were charismatic so all this kind of you know slaying people in the spirit which is complete nonsense and people just waiting to be knocked down and all that silliness and then you see the the formality of things like the church of england you know or, or other similar denominations none of this has got anything to do with bible believing christianity none of them you know they hold the veneer of christianity you know, and I don't believe that everybody in those systems is lost. I don't, not at all, but a significant portion are. And also of the significant portion that are saved and just simply messed up, they're not taking the time to read the scriptures to figure out what they should be doing and why. They're just too afraid to actually examine that and then walk away if they need to, you know, so... Uh, it's not easy to do that. And I know why people don't do it. I know why people don't challenge themselves on scriptures. I know why people don't challenge themselves on the King James Bible, because they don't want to change what they're doing. They don't want to upset the, the, the way that they do things, the regularity of what they do, the routine. They don't want to change it. And it's not fun to change. And it's not um, enjoyable to, to kind of challenge someone, you know, or a piece of scripture that people are clearly not using correctly and that's why i've had to leave two um buildings or two assemblies so one was a, a baptist um building and again this was before i even knew there was an issue and i ended up having to leave over sort of doctrinal stuff and things i wasn't happy about and that was when i discovered the king james bible and, and i've charted that at the very beginning of this channel and the other was because of there was just issues um and, and it surrounded um you know, things like money and, and so on. And um, I, I was just concerned with how certain scripture was being used. And I just had this feeling of, of unease and discomfort. And so in order to preserve what I'd left, um, I, I left. I didn't cause you know problems. I didn't you know spend ages trying to rebuke or reprove, reprove things. I just left. I didn't want to damage the assembly and I didn't want to cause problems. And uh, that's that's how I treated it. And uh, since then, I've been assembling elsewhere, of course, with other Christians and other. Um, I've been to other house churches as well, most notably in the Philippines. But uh, by and by, I'm, I'm here at home and this is where I assemble and this is where I fellowship. And this is where I spend my time as a, as a husband and a father and helping my family um, to understand the scriptures, to read it for themselves. Um, and to learn more and I think that's the other challenge as well for for men watching this video that, that really you kind of need to step up a little bit and at a time like this when actually for the most part if you did go to a building called a church this is kind of your time to step up and do what you kind of should be doing anyway so um, you know maybe this is the opportunity to change that now and I think perhaps that's why some buildings called churches are getting a little bit nervous and wanting people to continue coming to their uh, building. So yeah, just some thoughts. Um, thank you for watching. God bless and Godspeed.